Finally, the last section, such a long course, right? <laughs> but definitely quite complete, complete, a full journey is starting from introduction up to really technical consideration and through commercial products example. Okay, I hope you are enjoying the course as much as I love guiding you with me through it. Now let's move to the subsystems and architecture examples. In other words, uh, we're going to go through real examples already flying, patrolling, navigating, whatever, protecting <laughs> our nations. So attach, you will find pretty much all electronic warfare options, uh, which are pretty much uh, naval, airborne, ground based and submarine based okay so giving you the overall picture moreover you will be able to find commonalities and particularities between all of them so here we go let's start with airborne okay such a beautiful platform we are having here right beautiful so i won't dig into technical details related to the platform or the history uh, so just let's focus on why and how it is used for electronic warfare okay so well as you may know this one is a drone a big one but it's still a drone um, which means I'm numb there are no pilots flying inside it's uh, controlled from a remote link typically ground-based the idea is to fly as high as possible for two reasons avoiding hostile radars detection ground to air and the higher, the more space you can cover by your own sensors, right? Therefore, these platforms belong to the so-called Airborne Signal Intelligence, SIGIN, which is a supporting electronic warfare system. As depicted, don't you find some areas of the platform quite interesting in terms of shape or location? Yes, indeed pointed there are some areas where different sensors and electronic warfare equipments are installed so here for example starting from the left side we have a linear interferometer typically a phase linear interferometer okay we have already uh, discussed about it on the antenna area and the antenna section okay here below, ah, sorry, before moving, it, this is typically 180 degree coverage, so we will have one on this side and the other one on the opposite side, so covering 360 degrees. Um, Ellen giving high accurate um, angle of arrival and detection. Then below we have a big compartment. Uh, here usually you have some arrays, some direction finding as well for the combing range and lower frequency um, but look at the shape huh? it's quite suspicious this is quite clear that we are having some omnidirectional antennas as well um, here we go typically if you see this oh this shape um, actually you can see here some screws some installation if you is, uh, zoom in okay if you zoom in let me see if i can make it for you guys if you zoom in a little bit okay you zoom in a little bit you can see some rectangular right some this is quite suspicious that means uh, they are basically doors or yeah different areas that you can open up from the outside and install or the install a uh, different equipment inside so these areas are meant for that are meant for allocating different electronics uh, sensor receiver controlling and so on and so on um, so what else can we show here uh, another point look at this shape what do you think this one this one is quite unique typically it's a radon covering some a spinning antenna as we mentioned on the previous chapter or some other uh, omnidirectional antennas really big by the way either the spinning a high a big reflector or coming uh, for low frequency uh, range remember the lower we go in frequency the bigger 
is the is the antenna and therefore we need some radium covering it from protecting it from different critical environmental situations and the radium of course should be aerodynamically designed okay so that's pretty that's a summary as here another point we have a blade antenna typically for communication as we said for controlling uh, here we have another one for satellite communication gps and so on so yeah it's a quite a good platform full of <laughs> electronics and sensors and equipments okay so yeah let's move on <laughs>